Hi, I'm Dana and today I really wanted to take some time to talk about self-awareness in autistic people because I first saw it being talked about on Reddit. There's a lot of posts on Reddit and various autism subreddits asking other autistic people if they too feel like they're too self-aware and it got me thinking because I was like, yeah, I, I do feel like that quite often actually. So I like tried to research it a little bit and look into it to learn about it like I usually do when I find a little topic that interests me and I hated every single article that I read. I think that the articles that have been written about self-awareness in autistic people are really bloody terrible. I think they're awful. I think they're absolutely terrible. I can't believe that these are written by people that are actually trained and are supposed to know things in medical and scientific professions. I really, I'm, I'm yet to find one that I thought was remotely well written essentially. So I wanted to throw my own voice into the conversation because although I may not have the training and the knowledge and all of that stuff, I, I don't have a degree. I do have personal experience with being an autistic person who has some degree of self-awareness. And I wanted to talk about it today. <laughs> now, I think that I hated the articles because they, first of all, specifically focus on people with high support needs while also calling them low functioning, which is kind of just rude at this point, like learn, listen, do better. But also, they basically all declare that autistic people don't have self-awareness it's something we just totally lack we don't we don't got it we don't know anything about that and my personal lived experience of being an autistic person when it comes to self-awareness is very different from that also a lot of the studies that they've done it only used men which is always fabulous i love that for us but they also focus on self-awareness in a way of being able to sort of reflect on yourself and being able to understand the emotions you're feeling. And, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I consider self-awareness to be a lot bigger and more nuanced, I suppose, than that. It's it's not just the way that you think about yourself. I, I mean, it is, but I see self-awareness as being a lot more like, like when my uncle, like four years ago, mentioned that I have a funny walk and now every time I walk anywhere ever, there's a whole part of me that's like, oh God, am I walking weird? What do I, oh yeah, swing your arms, have like this type of posture, do this, walk like this, do that. You know, that's part of self-awareness because I'm aware that myself has a weird walk or at least someone assumed that I did, you know? And it, it ties into a lot more than just things like that, doesn't it? You know, because for example, in social situations, I'm very, very self-aware. I can tell the exact moment that I've made a conversation awkward. I just can't always tell why it's awkward now because I am self-aware but I'm autistic so I have autistic traits and I struggle with the social skills so it's not that I'm lacking self-awareness that means I've butchered this conversation it's being autistic you know I'm self-aware enough to know that I've butchered the conversation I just don't always know how and I think especially when we want to talk about people who have higher support needs I think a lot of minds immediately rush to the autistic person that stands there just telling you about their special interest. And a lot of the time, like a lot of people I know have said that they can, like we can tell, we know that we're boring people. We know that people are getting tired of us or annoyed of us or whatever else. But number one, we might not know why. Like personally, when I'm blabbering about Doctor Who to someone and they're getting annoyed, I know it's because I'm going on about Doctor Who. And I'll give that some autistic people will be like, well, it's a good conversation. Why would they be bored of it? Personally, I, I have the self-awareness to be like, oh, I know what's pissing them off or annoying or boring them here. But all the articles that I found seem to very much work on the assumption that we just don't have a clue. We're just talking and talking and this other person's getting really annoyed at us and we just completely lack any sort of self-awareness to know why. When, you know, we do, you know? So many of the things that I feel that they pulled up and that a lot of people will pull up when they want to talk about self-awareness and when it comes to autistic people is that we're lacking it I've heard so many people say that like we just lack self-awareness and I think that we on general especially those of us with lower support needs because obviously a lot of us with lower support needs we actually have a, a fair amount of support needs it's just that we're considered high functioning so we don't get given them but ignoring that it's a case of like it's autistic traits you know maybe these people aren't that well trained in autism I don't know maybe they're like focused on self-awareness specifically I really don't know but I feel like it's it's really being ignored that so many of our autistic traits are tied into these things you know especially when they want to talk about retrospective thoughts and they like to be like oh well these autistic people lack self-awareness because they can't identify all of their emotions like 
no, I can't identify all of my emotions, but I'm still feeling them. Like, I'm still self-aware enough of what I'm feeling to know I'm feeling it. I just might not be able to put it into words to explain to, to someone else exactly what I'm feeling. I might not even be able to put into words for myself exactly what the emotion is, but I still feel it. You know, it just seemed very dismissive of autistic people being people. It seems to see us as just bodies that have little brains in there and like we just don't know we just don't know what's going on and that's that's an issue with a lot of articles about autism is that we're dehumanized and not seen as people and you know I think maybe they kind of don't want us to have self-awareness because if we have self-awareness then we probably have enough awareness to know that they're talking about us like we're not people it's not fab <laughs> but because so much of what I've seen online is focused on the differences between those with low versus high support needs or just completely ignores those of us with low support needs it really makes me think that perhaps it's kind of more the case that those of us with the lower support needs, you know, we have to get on with things. You just, there's no one there to help. So I had to figure out how to be more self-aware. I didn't want to be taken advantage of. I didn't want to be seen as naive. I didn't want to be seen as an idiot. I didn't want to be seen as someone who's lacking self-awareness. You know, it's not a nice thing to be told. I was definitely told it as a teenager, like, oh, you're just so self, like not self-aware, you lack self-awareness. You know, it's definitely something I'd heard. And for those of us with who don't have obvious support needs, you know, those of us that are late diagnosed that could get through life pretending to be neurotypical, we're very much just sort of left to it and we have to develop self-awareness. I don't, I don't think I had any other choice. You know, and I certainly have autistic friends that were raised in kinder ways than I was. You know, they had a, a family that was supportive and loving. They had, they had a very different upbringing to me. And they didn't have to have such a level of self-awareness to protect themselves, I guess. And they don't. They don't have it. It's not that. But they could develop it if they needed to, I think. So I think it's a case of those with very high support needs. You know, they have to have help there. So they've been provided with the things that they need. So they haven't had to develop a self-awareness to protect themselves from the world and to be able to try to integrate with other people and be like socially viable and whatever else. It hasn't been forced upon them. You know, I, I, I could be totally wrong. I don't know. I, it's, it's just a theory from me. But I, I definitely think that self-awareness is something that I had to develop. And if anything, I think at this point, I've probably overdeveloped it. I think that there's a lot of times in conversations and the like and in general social interactions where I am so incredibly self-aware that I can't even begin to enjoy the conversation. I can't interact properly. I can't integrate myself into the conversation properly. I'm not really fully there. So then that makes it awkward because I'm not completely keeping up. And then because I'm so self-aware that it's become a little bit awkward, I'm like pulling back and retrieving and being like, oh God, no, I hate this. And when I've told therapists and other medical professionals about this, they seem to think it's a really good thing that I'm so self-aware. Every therapist I've ever had is like, oh my gosh, you're so self-aware. Like people don't normally figure out until they're way older than you and they're like really shaken by me being not a dick, I suppose. But you know, that level of self-awareness is quite nice because it means that I like feel like I have more of an understanding of those around me and the like. But when it comes to social situations predominantly but even you know I think when I say social situations people assume parties and friends and I'm talking even like getting on the bus or dealing with a cashier you know like anything's a social interaction to me if there's another person there and I don't want to do it because I feel like I can just see myself doing it and I'm cringing like that's where my self-awareness has taken me everything that I do is incredibly cringeworthy and I hate myself <laughs> You know, sometimes you gotta laugh and you cry. So yeah, I think, you know, having a healthy level of self-awareness is great. I think that there's definitely a middle ground of self-awareness where you can sort of tell how you perceive yourself and how other people perceive you line up quite well. And it's all a good time. But my level of self-awareness is, I mean, maybe it's not even self-awareness. Maybe it's just a bloody self-esteem issue, to be honest with you. But I feel like my self-awareness is very, very high to the point where like I do find everything I do kind of cringe and embarrassing, you know? Like, I can't look at old videos. Like, even like, if a video is from three weeks ago, I can't look at it because it makes me want to die because I'm so cringy, which isn't healthy. That's not a good way to have it. And I'm gonna work on it, but that's how it be right now. And going back to what I was talking about a moment ago for like two seconds before we round up the video, 
I think that self-awareness can also stem from everyone around me, kind of, especially during, like, later childhood, early teen years. I felt like everyone around me had a very different perception of myself to the perception that I had. And I definitely had a lot of different sources to tell me what their perceptions of me were. And it meant that eventually, I think my brain kind of went, you, you need to line up your perception of self to everyone else's. So that's where I got a sort of, like, shitty self-perception. But then my self-awareness has made it so that I'm very aware that I think those things are pretty true about myself. You know, like I say, it's probably just poor self-esteem and something I should work on. But also, I do feel like the things that I see and dislike about myself and the things that make me cringe about myself are all there. Like, I haven't made them up, they're there. <laughs> and I'm just very aware of them. So, that's been this video. <laughs> but yeah, that's sort of where I stand on the whole opinion of it all. I would love to hear anyone else's opinions in the comments, as always. It'd be really nice if you wanted to like and subscribe. We're meant to ask people to do that when you're doing the YouTube so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go I'm gonna stop talking it's been very it's felt very long it hasn't been that long but I did have to film this twice so I'm gonna go but whoever you are and wherever you are I hope you're having a lovely morning evening day afternoon week month year I'll see you in a few days